Did you know that grass is edible? We're talking about onion grass. This plant is often available in the winter and spring months and has bulbs similar to scallions. And today we'll make a scallion pancake recipe with it. So to make the scallion pancakes, you wanna have pizza dough or some other kind of dough. And you're gonna mix the scallions with the dough roll it up and then spiral the dough in a circle and flatten it out. Then you cook it like a pancake and flip it once and it'll be a delicious garlicky bread. This plant has six times as much vitamin C, 12 times more calcium, and 83 times more iron than spinach. This is chickweed and it grows wild in the winter and early spring. This plant is very nutrient dense. It contains calcium, magnesium, zinc, iron, and potassium, as well as vitamins A, C, and B complex vitamin. To identify this plant, you're gonna look on the ground floor of the forest and it'll be sprawling out as ground cover and it'll have these oval shaped leaves that are in opposite pairs. It also have small little hairs forming on the stem of the plant. Chickweed makes an excellent salad green, but you can use it in a wide variety of recipes. This gelatinous yellow mushroom is known as witch's butter. <laughs> This is an edible mushroom, however, it doesn't taste too much like butter, unfortunately. But you can still put it on your toast if you want. This mushroom doesn't taste like too much at all, but it is an interesting and nutritious addition to like a soup. And it's very fun to play with. You can often find this mushroom growing all year round, even into the winter in some of the temperate climates. These mushrooms can grow in the snow and ice. This is a variety of oyster mushrooms that prefers to fruit in colder temperatures. This variety is thicker and meatier than other oyster mushrooms you'll find in the summer. And one time I made campfire nachos with these mushrooms and it was very appetizing. What if I told you there's a tree in the forest that tastes like bubblegum and root beer? This tree is sassafras. The roots were traditionally used in root beer recipes and teas and the new growth of the leaves are also edible and taste like bubble gum. The twigs also make a good makeshift toothbrush because they have chemicals that help out the teeth and gums. So if you're ever camping and you forgot your toothbrush, just snap off a twig of sassafras and rub it on your teeth and gums. The leaves of sassafras form in three distinct forms. I call them the trident, the mitten, and the full leaf. And with these three, it can be easily identified. I'm here with a very rare and obscure plant. You probably never heard of it. It's called dandelion. Jokes aside, this is probably one of the most common weeds on the planet. The leaves, stems, and flowers of this plant are edible. It's rich in vitamins A, B, and C, and it also contains minerals like potassium, iron, and zinc. The root of this plant is used as a coffee substitute and can promote healthy liver function and balanced blood sugar. I've created a seasonal tea blend combining dandelion, burdock, chicory, licorice, and fennel. You can find it on my shop, sonofabear.shop. Violet is a spring plant that grows in the forest floor. This plant is easy to identify with obviously its violet flowers and its heart-shaped leaves. The leaves, flowers, and stems of violet can be eaten raw or cooked. The violet flowers can be used as an aesthetically pleasing topping for any dish you have. You can also use the flowers to make a violet syrup, if you want that purple drink. This plant is known as Indian cucumber. It has a tuber that tastes a lot like an actual cucumber. You can identify this plant with its long stem that forms a star pattern further up the plant of 5 to 11 leaves and then also forms another stem with a smaller star of three leaves and then a uh, flower above that when it's more mature. The rhizomes can be dug up and are edible raw or cooked and they taste quite delicious. Dryad saddle is an edible mushroom that's often overlooked in the springtime. This mushroom has a strange watermelon cucumber taste to it which is different from any other mushroom that I've found. You find this growing in the springtime on hardwood stumps and logs, particularly tulip poplar and elm. This mushroom is a polypore that's easily ID'd by its dark scales. You want to collect this mushroom when it's young and tender because it tends to get chewy as it gets older. If you find an older specimen, you can cut around the edges of the mushroom because the outer rim of the mushroom will be more tender than the uh, center. In mythology, this mushroom is seen as a uh, seat for fairies and dryads, hence the name Dryad Saddle. 
I'm going to show you how to ID reishi in three different stages. First up we have baby reishi. This forms as white nodes on hemlock trees for Ganoderma masuge. Now this mushroom will start to form an antler or a UFO depending on its morphology. The next stage we have the adolescent reishi. Now this becomes multicolored with yellow, red, and orange with a white ring on the outside of the mushroom. Finally we have mature reishi. This forms as a huge shelf coming off of the tree and usually is a solid reddish brown color. At this stage the spores have already been released so it's okay to harvest and dry the mushroom at this stage. I've created this reishi tea blend that combines ashwagandha and licorice and helps me relax and soothe my nerves at night. You can find it on my shop, sonofabear.shop. This plant is known as lesser periwinkle. It grows in the forest floor as ground cover with these pinwheel shaped flowers. This is a medicinal herb that is used in the pharmaceutical industry as the chemical vincamine. This compound is used to enhance memory and improve brain function. It can also be used as a mouthwash to fight gingivitis and sore throat. You can use the leaves and the flowers to make teas or tinctures. This plant can be toxic in high doses, so use it sparingly. Don't use this plant every day. Stinging nettle has a whole host of medicinal properties. This plant is anti-inflammatory. It helps reduce histamines, helping with seasonal allergies. It can fight urinary tract infections, enlarge prostates, help balance blood sugar, and increase testosterone by binding with excess estrogen in the body. In the Middle Ages, this plant was used for self-flagellation, so you can do that too if that's your thing. This plant is best used in teas, tinctures, or it can be eaten uh, cooked like spinach or in soups. I'm here with red dead nettle. Now this plant is red, but it's not dead, and it's not a nettle. It is, however, an edible plant that grows in the early spring. It has pinkish purple flowers that extrude off the sides of the plant. The plant has triangular leaves with small, fine hairs. It's great in salads, stir fries, and in soups. Now I'm going to talk about the difference between dead nettle and henbit, because these plants are often confused with one another, and frequently they'll be found growing right next to each other. They're both in the mint family, however henbit has clover-shaped leaves that are quite jagged and fairly hairless, whereas dead nettle has triangular shaped leaves that are quite hairy. Both of these plants are edible and can be eaten raw or cooked. This edible and medicinal plant is known as henbit. It is found in the winter and spring. This plant is great for digestive support, healthy bowel function, is also a stimulant and can help reduce fevers. This plant has square stems and is in the mint family. It has clover shaped leaves that are quite jagged. It is often confused with red dead nettle but I covered the differences in one of my previous videos. This plant is also edible. It can be used in soups, stir fries, and in salads. This edible mushroom is known as wood ear. This mushroom grows on dead hardwood limbs and twigs. This mushroom is very nutritionally dense with a lot of vitamins and minerals like iron and copper. This mushroom has been used in Asian cuisine, especially in soups, and stir fries. If you're feeling romantic, you can cut off an ear and send it to your sweetheart. You'll want to distinguish wood ear from amber jelly roll, which is another edible mushroom that grows on limbs and twigs. I'm going to show you the differences between wood ear mushroom and amber jelly roll. Now these mushrooms both grow on limbs and twigs all year round. They look fairly similar to one another. Wood ear has more of a definite ear shape, whereas amber jelly roll is more formless. Amber jelly roll also has a darker red color. Wood ear, on the other hand, has a lighter brown color. Both of these mushrooms are edible and can be eaten in soups and stir fries. Do you know there's a plant in the forest that tastes similar to a sweet tart? It's called wood sorrel and it's full of vitamin C. It has a sweet and sour taste to it. This plant is a great trail nibble while you're hiking, or you can collect some and bring it home for a salad. I also recommend pairing it with sassafras, which tastes more like a fruit. I'm here with hemlock tips, and it tastes like eating a lemon Christmas tree. The new growth of hemlock, spruce, and fir are edible, and they're quite delicious. They have an earthy, lemony flavor. 
You can eat these straight off the tree, or you can save them later to spruce up a salad. <laughs> you can also make tea with these for a super high vitamin C tea. Let's go foraging for reishi mushroom. Now this is peak reishi mushroom season. The mushrooms are full size, mature, and they've released their spores by now. So this is the time where I harvest the most reishi. Reishi mushrooms are an herb that is used to balance the immune system, mood, and stress levels. It produces a state of calm in the body and helps relieve anxiety. It's also great for autoimmune disorders. I make wild harvested tinctures of reishi on my shop, sonofabear.shop. This vibrant flower is known as red clover. It's an edible and medicinal plant that grows as ground cover. This plant is high in protein and contains lots of vitamins and minerals like calcium, magnesium, and vitamin C. The flowers can be eaten and have a sweet taste to them. The flowers can also be dried and used for tea and tinctures. This plant is used medicinally for helping out the lymphatic system and also treating skin conditions like eczema. This plant's cousin, white clover, is also edible and medicinal. Winner winner chicken dinner. I found this massive chicken in the woods mushroom growing on a hardwood tree in my backyard. This is one of the most easy to identify mushrooms in the forest. It has a vibrant orange top to it with a vibrant yellow underside and tips. It also has very small pores in the bottom. This mushroom is also delicious and tastes a lot like chicken as the name would suggest. I'll be making a barbecued chicken pizza later with this mushroom so stay tuned for that video. I'm so excited. I just found this chicken in the woods mushroom and I'm going to cook up some barbecue chicken pizza. Let's go. This mushroom is one of the most convincing meat substitutes I've had. I add in a little bit of onions and then barbecue sauce. I feel like this mushroom absorbs barbecue sauce better than most things because it's so porous. Next we'll cook the pizza. It's a pizza kit I got from the store so it's basically a glorified Lunchable but it's what I had on hand. Once the cheese is starting to melt, I'm going to add on the barbecue chicken that I cooked earlier. This barbecue chicken pizza was delicious and the neighbor's kids even loved it. Money doesn't grow on trees, however, mushrooms do. This is crown tipped coral and it grows on hardwood trees in the late spring and summer. You can distinguish this mushroom from other corals by the crowns on each branch of the fungus. At the head of each branch there will be three to six points that resemble a crown and this is how you identify this particular mushroom. There are some coral lookalikes that are poisonous however they grow mostly on the ground and are much more compact and they also don't have the little crowns on the top of each branch. This fungus is edible and I eat it mostly in soups and sometimes stir fries. This mystical albino flower is known as ghost pipe. This flower has no chlorophyll, so it has this ghostly white color, hence the name ghost pipe. This flower grows in the forest floor throughout the summer, and since it has no chlorophyll, it relies on a symbiotic relationship with mycelium in the soil to get its nutrients and its food. This flower is excellent at relieving physical pain as well as releasing emotional trauma. This flower is fairly rare, so harvests sustainably. I only take a few from each patch, and the patches can be up to 40 plants. I'm making a small batch of ghost pipe tincture, and it will be ready at the end of June. You can go to my website and sign up for the email newsletter if you want to be notified when that tincture is ready. I found my first lobster mushroom of the season. Now this is an edible mold that uh, transforms Rusula and milk cap mushrooms. It transforms these mushrooms into a bright orange lobster looking fungus. As the name suggests, this mushroom does taste like lobster or crab and is a great substitute for any seafood recipe. Last year I made a delicious lobster roll with these mushrooms and this year I'm going to make a lobster mac and cheese. I just found my first chanterelle of the season. These are cinnabar chanterelles. They're very small, vibrant colored chanterelle that grows in the forest floor. This particular species of chanterelle is a bright reddish orange color. This mushroom has a pleasant apricot fragrance to it and is a choice edible mushroom. Chanterelles are one of the best culinary mushrooms. They have a fantastic taste, smell, and texture to them. And they're probably one of my favorite mushrooms to eat. 
I just found this massive Berkeley's polypore in the forest. Now I often mistake this mushroom for chicken of the woods or matake, and sometimes I'm disappointed to find it because it's not those two. But this is a pretty good mushroom, especially if you find it when it's young and tender. If you find it at this stage, you can cut around the edges and also the smaller formations because those are still young and tender. <clears throat> this mushroom is a bit chewy. It tastes similar to chicken jerky, but you can add marinades like barbecue sauce or teriyaki to give it some flavor because the mushroom is porous and will absorb all the sauce and flavor. So I just found a jackpot. I found these oyster mushrooms growing a few inches away from some blackberries. Now this is an odd taste combination, but I'm just gonna eat the blackberries now as a snack and eat the oysters later for dinner. Sometimes foraging is super difficult. You have to search long and hard to find all the mushrooms and berries. And sometimes it's really easy. You just like walk outside your door and then all of a sudden you find five different plants and mushrooms that are edible. I just found my first golden chanterelles of the season. These are a choice edible mushroom that smells similar to apricots and have a delicious taste and texture to them. I just found this gigantic cauliflower mushroom in the forest. I'm gonna make a stir fry with teriyaki, ground beef, and noodles. These are the cauliflower mushrooms right here. Put them in. Look at that texture. Now I'm adding in the Mongolian stir fry. So now my cauliflower stir fry is ready and it looks so good. That is delicious. The cauliflower just absorbs all the flavor of the teriyaki. And it's so good. This little plant is known as heal all or self heal and it has a wide range of medicinal functions. This plant is edible and medicinal, but it's largely known for its medicinal properties. This plant is antiviral and anti-inflammatory. It's good for the lymphatic system, allergies, wound care, gut health. You can use the aerial portions of the plants and make them into teas, tinctures, oils, ointments. Self-heal can be made into an oil and used topically for cuts, burns, and bug bites. Self-heal is also great as a mouthwash because it's anti-inflammatory and helps with sore throats. Self-heal has many more medicinal properties, more than I can cover in one video, so research for yourself. This mushroom stains blue and smells like beef stew. This is beef bouillon bolete, also known as two-colored bolete, and it's edible and tastes like beef stew. There's another look-alike that's also edible that smells and tastes like curry. This mushroom has a very distinctive red and yellow color palette. This mushroom turns blue whenever you bruise or cut it. This is one of my favorite bolites to eat. There's a mushroom in the forest that tastes similar to steak. This is the beef steak fungus. I usually find this mushroom growing on live oak trees in the higher elevations, but it's said to grow on other hardwoods as well. The inside of this mushroom looks very similar to raw meat, but as you cook it, it'll get darker and darker and look more like cooked meat. You can make a beef jerky substitute with this mushroom, as well as any other dish that involves steak or mushrooms. I'm gonna make a steak and egg sandwich with this this morning. The color blue is extremely rare in nature, but indigo milk cap is a mushroom that has a vibrant blue color. This mushroom is a common edible mushroom that grows from midsummer to early fall in the Blue Ridge Mountains. This mushroom is edible, it's tasty when it's young and tender, but as it gets older, it's gonna be the last thing you want on your Burger King burger. This mushroom smells similar to Fruit Loops and can be used as a vibrant blue dye. This multicolored mushroom is worth $100 a pound. It's called Turkey Tail and by weight, it's one of the most valuable mushrooms in the forest. This mushroom boosts immunity by increasing killer T cells in the body. It's also full of antioxidants and helps build healthy gut flora. This mushroom can be tricky to ID because it comes in a variety of different colors and has a lot of lookalikes. You want to make sure the underside is white and that it's also bendable without breaking. Please use a guidebook to identify this mushroom. I have dried turkey tail mushrooms available on my shop Son of a bear dot shop. I also have some turkey tail tinctures that I make myself that will be available next month. 
so you can sign up for the newsletter if you want to be notified of those. This gigantic cluster of mushrooms can often be confused with chicken of the woods from a distance, but it's known as black staining polypore. This is a chewy but edible mushroom. The mushroom is very stringy, so I like to prepare it like pulled pork and add barbecue sauce in there. This mushroom likes to form in clusters at the bases of hardwood trees, especially oak. I have a full video on black staining polypore on my YouTube channel. These mushrooms grow in fairy rings in the forest. They're known as honey mushrooms, and they grow from trunks and roots of hardwood trees, often forming circles. These mushrooms are very abundant. In peak honey mushroom season, I can collect three to five pounds in a short hike. The caps have a similar texture to shiitake mushrooms, and I like to take the stalks and cut them up and cook them like french fries. It's super delicious. I have a video on my YouTube on honey mushroom identification, but I'll also create a, another TikTok on how to identify these mushrooms because they can be tricky. This abundant flower is synonymous with autumn and is great for alleviating seasonal allergies. The leaves and flowers of goldenrod are anti-inflammatory, can be used to treat urinary tract infections, sinus congestion, and also improve heart health. You can use the leaves and flowers to make a delicious tea or make a tincture. I'll have a tincture of this plant on my herbal shop, sonofabear.shop, by the end of next month. You can sign up for my newsletter to be notified when that comes out. Do you know that walnuts are actually a fruit? The holes of this nut are used as an anti-parasitic and expel worms and parasites from your intestinal tract. At the core of the fruit is a shell that contains walnuts. This right here is the black walnuts. To process the black walnuts, you'll need a hammer to smash the outer layer. You'll want to use gloves at this point because it will stain your hands black for several weeks. Then you'll want to gently smash the shell so your walnut is intact. You can use the walnuts in pancakes, oatmeal, or just on their own. I also like to make caramelized walnuts with uh, maple syrup. They're really delicious. I have a full video on black walnuts on my YouTube channel where I make pancakes with them, as well as hickory nut milk. Hickory nuts can be used to make a nut milk that tastes like pecan pie. It's so delicious. Hickory nuts can be gathered in the fall and have a husk that peels off sort of like an orange. They can be eaten raw or they can be made into pies or even nut milks. To make hickory nut milk, you just smash the shells and the nuts together and put them in the pot Simmer them for 15 minutes to make a tea out of them, and you can simmer them longer if you want a stronger and thicker nut milk. Sometimes you find seafood growing on the sides of trees. These are wild oyster mushrooms, and they are a delicious edible mushroom that tastes similar to oysters or clams. Oyster mushrooms are high in minerals like iron, zinc, and potassium, and they also have chemicals that are anti-inflammatory and help boost the immune system. This is the true oyster and the one you're most likely to find during the summer, but there is also fall and winter oyster mushrooms that are thicker and meatier, and you'll find those in the colder months of the year. You can use oysters in lieu of seafood, you can use them in stir fries, and I like to cook them in soups, especially ramens and clam chowder. Are you ever craving popcorn shrimp in the woods? Well, look no further. This is shrimp of the woods. It's a fungus that affects honey mushrooms and transforms them into these little shrimps. And has a texture similar to shrimp and also a mild seafood flavor. This mushroom is tricky to identify because you want to be familiar with both honey mushrooms and shrimp of the woods. So I don't recommend it for beginners. You can make all sorts of shrimp rolls and shrimp stir fries with this mushroom. So we got these shrimp of the woods mushrooms with teriyaki sauce. We got on a simple hot dog bun. Let's see how it tastes. Oh, these look good. Oh my God. Mmm. That is delicious. I just found the jackpot of lion's mane mushrooms. These mushrooms are a delicious and medicinal mushroom. Lion's mane are great for boosting mental focus, brain health, and they're anti-inflammatory and they have plenty of other properties. They also taste delicious. Can't wait to eat these. <laughs> I'm gonna eat some of these and then dry some of these for uh, teas and tinctures. I have some Lion's Mane tea on my website as well as tinctures. And I also have a video on Lion's Mane if you wanna learn more about identifying them on my YouTube channel.